Hello, church. Pastor Nathan here. Hope all of you are doing well. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, and I'm shooting this video kind of late in the afternoon, but uh, I hope you will uh, 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 get something out of the, the word this afternoon as we as we turn turn to it. So turn to Acts chapter 14, and I've just been studying this passage and wanted to share some, some things uh, from it. Acts Chapter, chapters 13 and 14 are the first missionary journey of Paul. Paul and Barnabas uh, went out. They stayed in the, the region of, uh, of Asia Minor, what we would call central, southern and central Turkey today. Um, started at, at Antioch uh, and then traveled around uh, Asia Minor and then, and then ended up back in, in Antioch. Antioch, that is, in, in the northern part of, of Israel. There's another Antioch that's in, in Turkey that we'll see in, in a moment here. Um, well, Paul and Barnabas find themselves in a, in a town called, called Lystra and they, 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 um, encounter a man who's, who's crippled. That's what Acts chapter 14 verse eight says. And let me read some of these, some of these verses, cause there's something incredible, uh, that, that, that happens here. There's two things that I want to draw our attention to Acts 14, eight. <clears throat> Now at Lystra, or Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul... Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. In the priest of Zeus, the temple was at the, excuse me, in the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice to the crowds. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Listen to this in verse 17. Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they scarcely restrain the people from offering sacrifice to them. So notice what happens. The... Uh, these, these, well, they were truly heathens, these pagans who were worshiping all these false gods. They see this miracle that's performed at the hand of, of Saul uh, or the apostle Paul. And, um, and what, what do they do? They, um, they are about to, to offer sacrifices to them. And they say, no, we're, we're people just like you. And notice in verse 17 that the Apostle Paul alludes to what is known as general revelation or, or natural revelation and what we might call natural theology. Notice he says that God did not leave himself without witness for he did good. Now, how has God done good for all people over all the earth? He did good by giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. See, God's love and his mercy uh, shines on onto uh, everybody, right? His goodness is shown to people all over the world. He gives them rain from heaven, which gives them fruit, uh, uh, which rain uh, produces fruit, which allows them to, to eat and have joy and gladness. The, the reality is God has never left himself without witness. So sometimes people ask these very difficult questions about, what about the person who's never heard of Jesus? What about the person who's never had an opportunity to hear about how it is that they can know God? Well, the reality is that God has revealed some things about himself. So at no point has God left himself without witnesses, is what this passage says. We, we get the same thing in the Old Testament in Psalms. The book of Psalm, uh, chapter Psalm 19 uh, speaks of the heavens telling the glory of God and the firmament, all the created order showing his handiwork. Romans chapter one and chapter two also talk about this knowledge of God that people have, even people who have never heard of God. And uh, Romans two <clears throat> alludes to the uh, 
um, the, the fact that the law of God is written on, on our hearts. And that's why we feel good when we do something good and why we feel awful when we do something bad, because there's that knowledge of God that's imprinted on our, on our souls. But the fact is that no matter how much general revelation a person has, that is not enough to get them to, to heaven. That is not enough to forgive somebody and bring them salvation. That requires something else. And that's what we're going to look at now. What's the something else that people need? They need not just natural revelation, but they need what? Special revelation. Well, that's what Paul brings them. <clears throat> and I want you to notice something else here. This uh, I, I find just, I find riveting, honestly, in, in starting in verse 19 following. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. Now, what city is that? Remember, go back to verse 8, Lystra or Lystra. So that's where all of this happened with these preaching the gospel to these heathen. Well, these Jews come from Antioch and Iconium, and they go to, they go to Lystra. They grab the apostle Paul, and they, they, they drag him out of the city, and they stone him, supposing he to be, him to be dead. Verse 20, but when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up and entered the city. What city? Lystra. He went right back into Lystra. And on the next day, he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. Now, I've got a little uh, a, a map, an atlas of the Bible. I, I guess there's so many resources online today that you probably don't even need one of these. But if, you, if you're like me, if you like paper books, this is probably one of the best. It's called the Moody Atlas of Bible Lands. And um, uh, it's, 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 it's worth, worth its weight in gold. I think it's really excellent. Well, here's a map that, um, that I'll share with you that, that shows the Apostle Paul's first and second journeys, missionary journeys. So Paul is right here in Lystra. I hope you can see this. Um, and Jews from Antioch and Iconium come to Lystra, grab Paul, drag him out of the city, and they stone him, leave him for dead. These other disciples, Barnabas and others, they come, they find Paul, and then they bring him back into the city. And then Paul goes with Barnabas to Derby, where they preach the gospel there. And then what do, they, what do the apostles do after that? They go right back to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. And I just love the heart of the apostle Paul. It's like, you drag me out of the city and stone me. And when I come to, I'm going right back to where God has called me. Do you know anybody like that today? I, I don't know. I don't know if I do. I'd like to think that I would be that way, but I'm highly doubtful, you know, that, that, that I would have or that you would have such a deep and a profound conviction of the calling of God on your life, that your attitude be, would be one that you can stone me, you can throw me in jail, you can do whatever you want to me, but I am following my Savior. I am following my Lord. And isn't that ironic that the Apostle Paul went back to those two cities, um, uh, to, to Iconium and to, to Antioch, the cities from which the, the Jews had come out of to to find the Apostle Paul and stone him. It's, it's almost the Apostle Paul being spiteful toward the, 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 the prince of darkness. I'm going to go right back to those cities where those Jews came from who just stoned me because they need to hear the good news about Jesus. And look here in verse 22, I'll end with this. He says, um, well, verse 21, when they preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, he, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Well, there's a lot there, but that's a, a great outline of what our church is seeking to do, to strengthen, to make disciples, to encourage the souls of those who are disciples to um, to encourage them, to strengthen them, to um, to remind them, to remind people that it's through tribulations that we will enter the kingdom. That was true in the first century, and that is just as true today. So there you have it. That was the great 
work of the Apostle Paul at, uh, at this point in the book of Acts. And you know and I know that the Apostle Paul was just as sinful and fallen and as broken as you and I are and in need of grace, just as you and I are. Nevertheless, the grace of God being powerfully at work in the Apostle Paul. Look at what one feeble man was able to accomplish. Uh, how much more does God want to accomplish through you and me today? I really believe that. Well, uh, I hope you will continue in the word. I think I might be bringing the devotional tomorrow, which is Acts 15, which is just a wonderful, uh, a wonderful account of what's known as the Jerusalem Council and some early controversy in the church. So it'll either be Pastor Stephen or myself, but I'll look forward to it. Y'all stay tuned. If you need anything, reach out at any time. Uh, I'm here to serve you. So is Pastor Stephen and the rest of the church staff and session. Um, so uh, God willing, we will see you again soon. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.